Yo, what up guys? Welcome back to another video. It's good to see all your smiling faces. I haven't seen you guys in a long time. I mean, I've been posting videos, but I haven't been in front of the camera uh, recently. Just because I've been so freaking busy. Um, I've got like a, a little business venture I'm kind of starting here. And uh, it's been taking up a lot of my time trying to prep that. And when that eventually begins, it's going to be even more of my time's going to be gone. But I'm always going to try to squeeze some time in for my YouTube family. But in this video, I just wanted to kind of just, you know, chat in and say hello with you guys. Um, I just released it the, uh, I think uh, today I released it, the Japanese Sakura Cherry Blossom video which was all filmed on this guy here on my Canon EOS. And I apologize, the last of my couple of videos have been only using um, been using my camera. And again, it's like, I'm always filming with my cell phone, guys. So like, you know, this is new territory for me. So like, you know, I want to get into, I, I love filming with my phone, get, don't get me wrong, I always will. But I also, you know, um, you know, when I'm out with my family and I want to get some home, home, home videos, like I want to use this and um, that's when I kind of take this thing out here. So, you know, um, I did modify mine a little bit. A lot of people have been asking about, because in the uh, other video where I was using the Grip Gear Dolly, and that was one reason why I also used this, because I wanted to use this with the camera. Normally, um, I always use this with my cell phone, but, you know, this also um, is, boom, also works with my uh, small camera. Now, this setup here is a little bit too much for it. The top, the top gear is too heavy for it. But when I'm out in the field, um, I do um, take the top off and then I can uh, basically slap this off. But some of you guys were asking us a little bit about my, my camera setup here. Again, I am using a Canon EOS M. It's their first mirrorless camera. It's very old. Doesn't even have a flip up screen. It's like all solid screen. And that's why I have this guy here on top because I use this as my second, uh, as my screen, which I like actually even better because I can get almost in any type of angle. Um, so, and then I can set it up for selfie mode like that. You know, it's, it's fantastic. Um, I'm going to do a review on this monitor a little bit later, but this monitor literally was like, I think 90 bucks. Uh, it has an HDMI on the side and it has an HD connects to an HDMI MIDI. So fantastic. You know, it's got focus, a little bit of a, some focusing aids to help me focus, which is also great too. So, um, somebody had asked about my cage on the front. He's like, Hey, I didn't know they make a cage for the Canon EOS M. They do not begin this. This camera is old. Um, I think they're on a Canon EOS 10 or and hang on hang on I, while i was reviewing the footage i realized i didn't answer his question about my cage because i was jibber jabbering too much this cage is actually a cage for a sony uh 65 6500 or something like that it's for sony um i'll put the link down in the description but yeah it is then i modified it because what i did was i cut off the bottom here so i can uh basically open up the flap here because when it originally comes it comes all the way up to here but it fits it fits this camera pretty well um the only thing the issue that i have um the camera the cage actually presses against the button for my to lock my lens but it's other than that, other than that that's it i mean it still you know i always keep it make sure it's tight and other than that, it works out fantastic. Some of you may ask, why would I have a cage for this? All of these holes and brackets, I can put an extension arm on there. Um, you can just basically build off of this for if you want to do like a full on little movie camera setup, that these, these will help you to be able to mount stuff anywhere. Anywhere there's holes on it, you can mount stuff on that to that. So, okay, back to the video. Canon EOS that just came out, um, which basically they went back to the old flip monitor, it shoots 4K. This one doesn't shoot 4K, this one does uh, 1080, it does HD. And then um, again, that, in that last video you guys saw that I posted the Japanese Osaka video, um, I actually shot, it does 60 frames, but not at HD. It does 60 frames at 1280 by 60. So very low in lower resolution but you know a lot of people always ask me hey how come you don't film in 4k and things like that and i'm like it's not really necessary because in the soccer video i was using a quality that was less than what my cell phone you know lesser than my cell phone my cell phone goes all the way up to 4k to 2k to hd and shooting at that lower quality um you know 
it's to me it's just still still filming i'm still it doesn't really matter the quality as long as it's not too blurry and pixelated you know that's okay i did notice the color grade i did i was trying out some um that's another thing color profiles or lut not lut profiles i forgot what we call them uh like log profiles that i can load onto this camera so it, it comes stock with like natural or vivid or nature or black and white but I've also downloaded another one that I put inside here that was um, uh, Technicolor's. Technicolor has a uh, file, uh, a log profile, which basically makes everything a little, it looks a little grayish. I've talked about it before in, a, in one of my other videos, because Filmic Pro, the newer version, you can film in certain like log, like a flat log or a, a log um, profile. Well, this does that too. And I actually downloaded a new log, another Canon log, for one of the bigger cannons and downloaded it to this just to see what it, how it would look in this video and I wasn't too happy with the color grade the way it came out but then I can't totally pass judgment on it because I was also again filming in a lower quality I think I'll try one more time filming it at HD and then using that same log profile um, and then see how it comes out again but the color grade was a little bit not my normal grading style that I would normally do uh, it was a little bit different but um, it's all about, you know, filming, guys getting out there, practicing, filming, trying new stuff, trying new techniques. And that's pretty much any time I take this guy out, it's all new to me. So, um, like, I did get some slider shots. I got a couple of uh, really cool slider shots where I had this on the, on the track. Also, getting some footage here using the grip gear. I'm using it in the dolly in the uh, slider mode today. I got my camera mounted on top. And then what I'm doing here is I also got my monitor connector right here so I can just see what kind of shot I'm getting and then you know I'll, I'll kind of start it like actually like this boom and then I'll just kind of monitor up oh, lost the signal in there but I'll monitor it because it's doing its move fantastic and uh, man, that, that was that was really fun putting that using the focus, you know, and with one thing when you're using, you know, uh, a, a, a slider, you really got to have something in the foreground, something in the I try to have three layers. I try to have something in the foreground, my subject and then something in the background. So when it's sliding, you know, the stuff in the front is moving a little bit quicker. You get this little like parallax motion. Uh, really cool. I had a great time doing that. I did get one that was going forward like in between some I was shooting through some bushes and then I had them out of focus uh, That was freaking awesome and um, It was interesting though because with this again when I had the camera mounted to this It was very hard to kind of see what I was focusing or you know to get all the focus, right? so um, I basically just took off my monitor plugged it into the camera uh, got my shot the way I wanted it, then unplugged it, then hit record and let the thing go along, let the grip gear go along its tracks and, and get the shot. So um, it's fantastic, man. This thing, guys, I'm still just, I'm, you know, I haven't, I've been lagging on getting reviews done. I got a couple other videos that I've been lagging on, but this thing, guys, uh, the link is in the description. It is fantastic for mobile filmmakers. Like, like I guess I've only used it once with my camera, but I predominantly was made, this was a, for my camera. And it's, it's just awesome. It's just absolutely awesome. Even in this setup here on the table, if you want to do tech reviews and stuff like that, this helps with doing product reviews. I mean, again, I can put the wheels, but um, I'll put the link to that video. There'll be many more videos coming with this, guys. I have many more videos that I, I have planned in my notebook. <laughs> and I'm barely like on number five out of like 50 of videos. So, you know, I'm trying to get them in when I can. But yeah, guys, um, I just wanted to touch base with you guys, let you guys know how things were going here. Um, believe me, I have not forgot about the cell phone. I will continue to be doing uh, some videos with the cell phone. Um, it's just right recently I've been getting a lot of reviews. Um, and that's one thing, uh, talking about YouTube pages and your YouTube channel. If you want to get into tech reviews and uh, things of that nature, hang on, let me make sure something. Another tip that I also when I'm running a long time on the cell phone when I'm recording like one time, I try not to record like a big video that's like 12 or 15 or 20 minutes because then it's just like if there's any issues you just lost it 20. So I try to keep it short like that was a seven minute stint. I like to even I like to less have them less. I can be like five minutes and then kind of stop in five minutes and stop just it just it's a personal thing that I like to do because I've done it a couple times where I was recording 
a segment and I was talking for like nine minutes and then I go back and look and like the audio like was crappy halfway through the video and I was like ah I had to do it all over again but um back to my tip about you know if you guys want to do if you want to get into tech channels now getting into YouTube and when you start making good content you like again I always throw up the links of stuff that I'm using I always like to throw their logos up if, the, if I like the equipment I want to let you guys know what equipment I'm using because I'm happy about that equipment and then in the future you may start to get people to want you to do reviews of things and recently I've been having a lot of more reviews coming my way which I this was totally unexpected it wasn't planned um, I, you know I wasn't into the tech channels now the one thing reason why I wasn't into a lot of the tech channels I only have a few tech channels that I actually watch is because a lot of times they'll get a new piece of gear and I watched it so many times it's like oh new grip gear uh, table dolly okay unboxing for 10 minutes and then after that they're gonna talk about all the specs for another five minutes that's 15 minutes of them just talking about this piece of equipment which all that data that they just gave me I can just go to their website for that and read about you know I believe in just getting out there and showing me what this actually does and then you can talk about it when I'm out there in the field so I think a lot of people a lot of companies have kind of liked that style and have been that's why they've been every single time I've gotten an email oh I like the way you do your reviews can you guys review this I like the way you do this and I think that's probably why is because um, I just like to just get out there and show you what it does and then we'll talk about it as we're out there talking about it. instead of me unboxing and then like I don't want to watch you take anything out of the box here's the box let's take it out of the box here's the wrapper here's the instructions oh great don't come here for unboxings because I don't really do them I just will get out there in the field and do it so um I got lots of other stuff coming up for um for for review I had to blow the dust off of this little guy the Wii Muse action cam again this was my GoPro killer my GoPro knockoff I pay like $90 for this thing absolutely worth all $90 of it but I've got a another company that came to me uh Feiyu Tech uh they basically um want they sign out they you know again for gimbals they were like, hey, check these gimbals out. And I'm like, you know what? Um, I'm actually not into in interested in, the, in these gimbals at the moment because I have uh, plenty of them and um, I'm looking for something different. So they're like, how about a body gimbal? And I'm like, a body gimbal? And I'm like, that might be perfect. They're like, we see that you vlog on your, cell, on your bike sometimes. And I'm like, that's a great idea. So uh, the WG2 something, we'll get into in that video, body gimbal. I'm going to be uh, doing some reviews about that, which is great because you guys know I like to vlog and ride the bike all the time. So that's going to be awesome. So enough of my jibba jabba i think this is a long jibba jabba video um i gotta get to, again some more product videos uh done and um i'm just gonna get back out there and start montaging 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 this is patrick labar i'll catch you guys in the next video peace keep filming see ya And also, I want to show you guys really quickly my setup that I'm using here, my new $10 grip that I've talked about a while back, which is also another video on my list of to-do things. But um, fantastic, quick and easy. Take a look at this. All right, I quickly wanted to show you guys my little setup here with my little $10, my little $10 selfie, not even selfie, like $10 grip that I got on Amazon. I'll put the link down in the description. This thing is awesome, dude. So I've been using this recently just because I have, right now I do have my phone out of the case, but I can have my cell phone in the case also, which a lot, which is so convenient because my other system, I always had to take my phone out of the case. And unfortunately doing that, taking it in and out of the case, that's how I dropped my Sony and the screen stopped working or it got messed up from taking it in and out of my case trying to mount it. So this one is fantastic. At home I'll take it out, but when I'm out on the road, I'll leave it in the case and mount it inside this. On top you can see there's a shoe, uh, cold shoe mount. So I got my wireless mic system hooked into that right now because I broke my other microphone, which totally sucks. But dude, this is fantastic. It's got a little leveler there. Again, on the bottom, I got one of my self mounts for my quick release on the bottom there. And this is my little like quick home setup 
with the cell phone that I use to make some uh, some videos and stuff like that. Again, I'll put this little link in the description for, blah, 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 for this in the description. But yeah, that's cool. This is my my setup, my quick home YouTube setup. And of course, you know, I got this light over here, which I'm using because um, it just helps me get a cleaner shot when you're using lights, guys. This light is everything with these cameras, especially with the sensors and stuff. So I use that light to help me to get um, to get a better shot. <laughs> 